Hello designers! Today we're going to create a banner ad that we would put on a website or on a social media app such as Facebook. Here you have an example of a banner ad I created for a fictional business called Colonel Court Munchies. Colonel Court Munchies sells food. Food that's tailored to students like you. So this ad basically shows off the food that is sold at this fictional business and uh, features information about the food that would appeal to students like you. It's simple, it's to the point, it's colorful, and it's visually appealing. I created this example entirely on Photopia.com, but I'll be using Photoshop for my tutorial today. I'm going to create a brand new document on Photoshop. I'm going to make sure that the measurements are set to pixels. And my width is going to be 1200 pixels, while my height is 628 pixels. The resolution is going to remain 72 because this is a document that I'll be seeing on a screen. And I'll make sure that I title my document Banner Ad before I click Create. I have my rulers enabled. If your rulers are not enabled, you can go to View and Rulers to enable them, and I can see that they're set to inches. Because they're set to inches, it makes it easier for me as I'm going to go and drag out some vertical guides. So I'm placing the first vertical guide at 4 inches in my ruler, just using the guides to align to the ruler at the top. I'm placing the second guide at 8 inches and I'm placing the third guide at 12 inches. This is going to help for me to basically align all of the different objects that I'm going to be placing in the ad and make them look organized and professional. Okay, now I'm going to be opening some of the images that I downloaded from Pexels.com that I want to use on this ad. The first is going to be an image of a wood background that I'm going to be using in my ad. As you can see, it's there's not much to the image. I'm just interested in the texture, so I'm going to select Control A, Control C, and flip over to my canvas and select Control V to paste the image of the wood texture into my background. Now I'm going to go and open the other two images that I want to use in this ad. I downloaded a picture of a burger and of a sandwich platter and I'm going to hit control while I select them both simultaneously so that I can open up them at the same time on Photoshop. Here I'm just cropping out the majority of the background that I don't really need to just make it easier for me to go and select the actual burger. So I use the crop tool to try to eliminate the majority of the background and now I'll be going in with my magic wand tool so that I can try to eliminate that black background surrounding the burger itself. You can use any selection tool that you prefer to use because I had a solid color background it was just easier for me to go and use magic wand and then to hit delete in my keyboard so I could try to eliminate that background. Make sure you guys go and unlock your background layer, which I forgot to do the first time, so that you guys are able to use delete and just get rid of the majority of the parts that you don't need. As you can see, I dragged the image of the burger over to my canvas with, where I had the wood background already. I'm just going to now use free transform so I can make the image significantly smaller. As you can see, it's pretty huge. And I'm looking for the sides and dragging from the corners so that I can go and decrease the size of that giant burger image. I want to create a very similar layout to what I had in my original example, so I'm just going to go and drag the burger image to the right hand side of my document and just basically place it there. If I decide at any point in time that I'm not happy with its placement, I have the ability to move it around and put it elsewhere, but for the moment that works. 
Now I'm going to be working with the image of the sandwich platter. Once again, I'm trying to delete as much of that background as possible using my crop tool. And then I'll be using a combination of selection tools so that I can basically just get the selection of the platter itself. I'm just getting rid of the rulers and, not the rulers, I'm sorry, the grid and the guides just to help me visualize this better. And then using quick selection so I can try to make a selection of the sandwich platter to the best of my ability. I was experiencing some lag, which you guys might as well, so be patient. Take your time with it. If you mess up, control D as your friends so that you guys can clear your selection and start it over again. Then I'm just going and dragging that selection over using the typical method that I do of control A to select the layer and control C to copy it. Control V to place it, and here you can see it was a little big. So I'm using free transform one more time by dragging at the corners and placing it into my uh, canvas. I just went and I dragged that sandwich platter underneath the burger layer because I wanted to create the look that the burger was overlapping. So feel free to drag your layers around and reorder them as necessary. When I zoomed in, I realized that I had a mistake in the selection that I made of that fries. So I'm just going in and doing a very simple layer mask on that sandwich layer and using my good old brush tool with black selected as my color so that I can go and try to eliminate that messy selection and just make it look a little bit more seamless. This is extra, as you guys would say but I just don't like it when my selections are really jagged and ugly and they distract me. So it only took a few minutes to basically fix that and now I'm just panning around to see if I notice any other mistakes on that selection. Now that I'm done adding the main images that I'm going to be using in my ad, it's time to add the typographic components. So the first thing I'm doing is dragging out a big text box where I intend to include the name of the business, so Colonel Court Cr Munchies. I had already selected a font called KG Happy when I was working on a different project, and I thought that it worked fairly well for the purposes of this ad, so I didn't select the a different font. I just left it at KG Happy. All you really see me doing here is just playing around with the placement of the text and trying to match the colors of the text to the colors in the image so that I could create a more harmonious composition. Because I want to create several different layers of typographic hierarchy, you'll see that the title is going to be set in the largest possible type size in comparison to all the other text that I'm going to be adding to the ad shortly. So keep that in mind as you guys are designing your ad. What is it that you want your potential uh, viewers to notice first? For me, I wanted viewers to notice the food and then the name of the business, which is why the food is so big. And then the next thing in scale um, is the actual title of Colonel Court Crunchies. Munchies, I'm sorry, I messed that up. Okay then, now I'm gonna be adding some information about each of the items in the ad, namely the sandwich platter and the burger. I'm just dragging out some ellipses and trying to match the color in the ellipses to those being used in the image so I can create a more harmonious composition by basically just dragging my color picker over parts of the image and I'm trying to match here some of the greens that are being used in the vegetables in each of the dishes but I'm going to be changing that momentarily because it just didn't work out. Now the idea is that the ellipses are going to frame some of the text that I'm going to be adding so that the text is a little bit more noticeable to any potential viewers who are going to be looking at my ad. I played around with the placement towards the middle and then I realized that it didn't really work for me and it was a little bit distracting. 
So I started dragging the ellipses around to different locations throughout my ad until I found a location that just worked better for me. All right, apologies for any baby noises. I am a mom, that's my life. Here I'm just dragging out a text box and I'm basically going to be including the information that I want viewers to know about each of these dishes. Typically this is what your clients would actually tell you ahead of time. They would tell you the name and the price of whatever they want you to feature in the ad. In this case I'm just making up the names and making up the prices. But here you can see me look for a slightly different font from the one that I was using in the title because it has a lot of these hatch lines that make it look three-dimensional and I didn't want to use the exact same font in the caption information. So I'm just looking for a far more subdued font, a sans serif that's going to complement the font that I was using in the title. When you guys are selecting fonts, just remember what we talked about. Your number one level in the typographic hierarchy scale should be the most attention getting. It should, that's your display font. That's your chance to use the display font. But when you guys are going into your level twos and your level threes, that's where you guys go for it with a far more subdued font, a smaller type size, and a less attention getting color. So you'll see that as I'm typing this up, it's in a considerably small type size, it's 14 points. And then momentarily, I'll be changing the color to black. You don't have to use the exact same colors. I just want you guys to consider the topics that we've discussed in class and how to make a harmonious composition where you have one center item that's the focal point for your viewers and then everything else just is kind of working with that focal point so it doesn't feel like the viewer is being dragged everywhere and they don't know where to look. You can see here I just toggled open my character panel because the letting was off so if you guys find that you're not seeing your text check your letting it might be that you have a significantly high letting based on whatever you did in previous projects and that's why you can't see it. I wasn't happy with the placement of the very Kelly Green ellipse. So I just dragged it over and I changed this, the color to that more avocado green. Now what I'm doing is I hit Control J on that text layer and I'm dragging the new text layer over to that remaining ellipse. And this helps me save a lot of time because the settings are already set for me. It's the same font, same size and so forth. So all I have to do is basically change the name and change the price. So it's a good idea for you guys to go and just kind of duplicate your text layers if you guys are going to be adding further information into your ad. Here you can see me playing around with the um, orientation and you can see me playing around with some of the different ways that I can position the ellipse and the text layer so that I, all the information is showing but so that it's not necessarily overlapping the burger or looking distracting. All right, I'm almost done here. Now I'm just gonna be adding some star shapes. I created this star shape by just using my polygon tool and making it five sides and selecting the star option with I believe a ratio of 50%. If you're working on Photopia, it'll actually be a lot easier for you guys to create the star because if you use the custom shape tool, you'll see that the star shape is already like pre-made for you so you won't have to create the star like I just did on Photoshop. 
I want to add several different stars to use as ratings for the food. So what I'm doing is after creating that initial little black star, I'm just hitting Ctrl J to duplicate the star layers. And then I'm using the guides to help align the stars to the same line in the grid and make them look straight. And basically I'm repeating my steps and just duplicating more stars, aligning them to the guide so that I can add star ratings to each of the dishes as you can see here. I chose to do a star rating because, I don't know, I thought it would be fun. You guys don't necessarily need to do that if that's not what you want. Here I'm just disabling the grid so I can see what it looks like so far and I'm pretty happy with it. I'm just going to go now and group all those stars so that my layers panel starts looking a little bit more organized. All I did was uh, select all of the stars using control click and then I selected the group icon at the bottom of my layers panel. Here now I'm just adding a text layer where I'm going to be adding a student review that says so friggin good. And you can see me making some spelling mistakes that I quickly correct because it is not okay to have spelling mistakes when you have spell check everywhere. You can see me also lowering the point size significantly so it kind of goes and fits in that line above the stars. And I guess this would serve as my third level of typographic hierarchy in terms of scale. And I'm also going and adding another review to the burger image to just go and finalize my ad. You can see me going and playing around with the placement because I wasn't so happy with the placement of this particular review. And you guys can definitely do that if it just doesn't work the first time around, if it looks crowded or it just doesn't work for whatever reason. I, I'm not there to see you guys designing, obviously. Just move all your layers around until you guys can figure it out. Okay. I was pretty tired of working on this ad for about 45 minutes, so I decided I was just going to go and save my final draft. I went to File Export and Save for Web, and I selected PNG24 as my file type. Now, if I wanted to go back to this at any point in time, I would obviously make sure to save the PSD file, which would enable me to change changes later. But for now, I'm pretty happy with it. This is what I want to go and submit to Canvas. Hit me up if you have any questions. I can't wait to see your designs.